has made a career by speaking on principle and defending the unpopular, but only a select few know about his crippling nicotine addiction. Shut up, you don't know. From Fox News and DailyCaller.com, please welcome Tucker Carlson. Uh, let me get Tucker on the phone. Hazel just tried to call me on the cell phone, Spike. Brent, does he not know that I'm on the air? <laughs> he should. What a jackass. Uh, Tuck, how are you, my friend? Bubba! My crippling nicotine addiction. You crippling ju- suggests that it in it, some way impairs me. You're addicted, to, you're addicted to me, are you not? You cannot... I'm quit. totally addicted to you, and it's a happy addiction. You can't Certain qu- addictions are not crippling, they're empowering. You can- nicotine and Bubba are two of my empowering addictions. They they make me a better person. They ease anxiety. They probably increase my lifespan. I mean, they're good. It's like broke back mountain. You can't quit me. I I can't quit you, man. And I wouldn't want to. So, <laughs> man, you just missed it. Uh, talk about a, an incredible hour. We just had. Uh, let me get you give you the backstory. There was a guy, there was a black preacher down here. His name's Anthony Lowry, okay, and he's from Lakeland, Florida, and he got arrested last week for preaching on the sidewalk. Uh, he has a little sound system and stuff, and he gets on there on the corner of like Martin Luther King and Main Street. Really not a, a very residential area, more of a business deal. And during the day, for nine years, for nine years, he has preached every day for nine years. And and so some stupid, overzealous, in my opinion, you know, police officer comes and tells him to turn it down one day. And Anthony, you know, is the Lord's telling him not to turn it down. So the cop hauls him off to jail. And Can you do that? Well, I mean, for breaking a quote unquote sound ordinance, I would say that you understand that police work is, you know, the letter of the law. And then obviously there's, a, you know, it's, just, it's a highly discretionary. I think that, uh, you know, hindsight being 2020, he would have not done it now in the midst of all the bad PR his agency is getting. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people doing a lot of things on a lot of street corners. And a guy that's preaching the gospel is probably a guy that you probably just leave alone and let him do his thing, don't you think? I would say without question. So anyway, this guy gets hauled to jail, and uh, we come to his rescue as I gave him, you know, 40, 35 to 40 straight minutes of being able to preach whatever he wanted on my show. No way. Yeah. How'd it work? Uh, It went well. I mean, you know, he had a a lot of inspiration to say, uh, but we had every, every, pretty much every television station in here today and, you know, covering it because we're the only ones that have creative control and the balls to be able to, you know, shut down for 30 and 40 minutes and let a black preacher come in here and say anything he wants under the guise of the First Amendment. That's good for you. Did you learn anything? No, nothing that I haven't heard before. I mean, you know. It, it was more, it was more <laughs> same old, same old. You know, hallelujah, Jesus loves you, died for your sins, you should be a good person, no big deal. And, you know, he still was like, hey, man, he, he, uh, he loves the police officer, he understands, no big deal. He was able to minister to some fellas for the 12 hours that he was in jail, <clears throat> you know. But uh, again, you know, we're the, that's how we that's how we roll. We get some critic like Porter who thinks he can do radio better. Bitch, get up in here and try it yourself. And we get some pastor that gets arrested for for preaching on the street corner. Bitch, you're able to talk to ten ten people that day. Talk to uh, you know talk to two million via our show. Come on, kid, no big deal. That is fantastic. So I love that. It must have confused the hell out of your audience, though. <laughs> do you get a lot of black, black preachers? No, I don't think in general, Brent, a lot of black no. preachers are given the opportunity that we gave Anthony Lowry. No, but it was the point of exercising his right to free speech. It was, it Amen. Was, it I was, totally agree with that. It was the absurdity of a police officer taking upon himself to get this guy on a sound violation. Uh, you know, and the guy was, you know, exercising, you know, exercising his First Amendment in a positive way, not hurting anybody. It was just the absurdity of it all. So I was like, you know what, kind of being a smart ass Brent, say, hey, cop, <laughs> you think that uh, him, you know, speaking on the corner of Lakeland's a big deal? How about put him on a nationally syndicated radio show to make you even look like more of a stupid ass? <laughs> That's fantastic. You've, you've had a lot of pinch hitters lately. A lot of guest hosts. Yeah, we got the grandma. You heard about that? We got her. No. Okay. You didn't hear about, you didn't Actually, hear about it was, that? Rep- it was reported on Daily Caller, so he might know the story, yeah. but he does, it doesn't have the outcome on Daily Caller. Yeah, Spice, give him the uh, the backstory to all that and how we saved the day there with our attorney. Well, basically, a 73-year-old grandmother had uh, had slapped her 18-year-old daughter, granddaughter because uh, the, the granddaughter kept cussing at her and stuff like this, and the grandmother was just trying to keep her in school and keep her on the, the straight and narrow. She was a smart ass. So uh, the, you know, the cops were called, and any time the cops are called in a domestic situation, some Somebody's going to jail. Well, unfortunately, it was the grandma that went to jail. So uh, we got uh, we got the charges dropped eventually. And basically, we had them both on the air and had them talk it out and hash it out. And the whole deal it was a we good time. The, we got the grandma good for you. We got the grandma and the smart ass eighteen year old on the air. I got the eighteen year old counseling with our with our psychologist, and I got 
the uh, grandma represented by Kevin Hazlett. He went to the prosecuting attorney, got all charges dropped, and we say and we saved the day yet again. So basically, you guys are bringing peace to this world. Yes. Exactly, we're bringing peace. I'm actually very, very impressed, but not surprised yeah. one bit. I can't be so as the guy. Who I talked to a couple of weeks ago, the guy who said he could be a better radio show host than you. Sure. Does he come back on? No. No, he's never coming back on again. He's an idiot. What's his name? Porter. Porter. The, right. the, Porter. the problem with Porter is the guy has probably got all types of voices and thoughts in his head, and I think that if he could communicate in a media-type savvy way where you speak and then you listen and then you have a comment and then you listen, uh, but he's always so sticky and he's always got some ulterior motive that he won't shut up long enough to let anybody else get an, 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 an edgewise, and he's just... I don't like yesterday he called up here, Brent, with just some sticky, stupid, smart alecky type deal. I'm like, you know what? I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Yeah, yeah just too annoying. What's I agree answer? completely. What does he do for like a job? Manson, what are you going to say? No, it wasn't me. Oh, Brent, what are you going to say? I, I was going to say, if you quit with the shtick and just be uh, have a regular conversation, he might be all right. We don't know what he does because you don't. I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. I, I don't even want to give him the, any more of my thought and or breath. I want to ask you about... Uh, this the, probably the ugliest human being. Ever. I mean, I think I'd have sexual relations with Clarence Thomas before I'd have this this old white faced bag that uh, that Obama picked yesterday. I mean, are you kidding me? You don't think she's that hot? I, <laughs> come on, I, I would seriously. I would have sexual relations I, with. I Clarence. gotta be honest with you. I don't like her, and I wouldn't vote to confirm her if I were a U.S. senator. But I do feel sorry for her in that way. I feel sorry for unattractive women. I mean, there's nothing they did, you know? Oh. She, I mean, she nobody could, deserves that. And yeah. men are just mean. Yeah, but she could certainly, I mean, shape it up a, a little bit. I mean, I mean, lose 10 or 15 pounds, get a tan, fix those teeth. I no, mean, get it's a, just absolutely fundamental. Physically, the problems. Are I mean, this just woman. She's okay. never going to be an attractive. Let's woman. okay. Let's let's take the attractiveness out of it. Let's just talk about the fact that she's never sat on a bench one day of her life. Don't you find that a little bit of problematic? Majorly problematic. Majorly problematic. And by the way, they, the White House, has not released, and looks like they're not going to release her records, basically the memos that she wrote during the Clinton administration. They're and, not releasing them. And did you know did you know that she wrote some memos um supporting the Bush lawyers warrantless wiretaps as well? She's yeah. not she doesn't have a great civil uh civil liberties record which is why I'm one hundred percent against her. No, she doesn't. Uh she doesn't and she's also you know, anybody who would kick military recruiters off campus, I'm sorry. Look, you can make a case against don't ask, don't tell. Whatever. You don't like it, let's you know, let's debate it. But to prevent military recruiters from coming to a school that takes four hundred million dollars in tax money every right. year is pretty outrageous. Right? I agree. You, can, you can't have the best of both worlds. You, you gotta, really can't. You gotta you have really one can't. You gotta have you one wanna take either. that money, you wanna steal our tax money, then you know, when the military wants to recruit on your campus, you, you can't block them. No, you and got you got that was a law, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that is a law. And not only that, you're so you're gonna allow big corporations go to Harvard Law and recruit lawyers all the time. So you're sure. you're gonna allow the, the big corporations to, to do it, but not the military to, to Record, uh, to recruit JAG officers, which we need in the military? I mean, that's ridiculous. It's disgusting. It's totally disgusting. And think about what kind of, I mean, what kind of weird, out of the mainstream life would you have to be leading in order to think that was an, a good idea? Are I mean, you, you'd have to be pretty out of it. Are you seeing uh, the polls now, Charlie Crist, uh, up by six points on Rubio right now? Did you see that? No. 38 oh, yeah. to 32. Yeah, Charlie Crist is way out in front Thir in the three-way well, race. 38, yeah, in a three-way ra three race, 38 to 32 by six right now. Uh, that's like a 15-point turnaround, down by nine by some points when he was a Republican. So now he's going to ban offshore drilling. <clears throat> Yeah. One could only hope. Well, talk. I mean, here's the deal, man. Here's the problem with politics, okay? That you're not allowed to change your mind. I mean, outside of the world of politics, whether you're a father, whether you're a husband, whether you're a businessman, whether you're in charge of the Daily Caller, whether you're whatever the hell, everybody's allowed to change their mind. It's, oh, I agree with you. No, no, I'm not attacking him for that. You misunderstand. I completely approve of changing your mind. Yeah. Smart people change their mind. Well, it's like you know, you're saying, okay, now he's for not. You know, he's he's. No, no, no. I'm not criticizing him for that at all. I'm not criticizing him for moving his positions. As evidence changes, you react to it. My mind changes all the time, and I hope it always does. When it stops changing, then that's when you know you've got Alzheimer's. So, I mean, the, you know, the bottom line is... So, my point is, uh, you're banning offshore drilling because your constituents are mad about this oil 
leak. Well, but the truth is, we we kind of need offshore drilling. We don't. What are the options? Well, here's the deal. Maybe <laughs> there's maybe, a lot of them. Maybe yeah. maybe maybe, the, Boone Pickens. maybe maybe the options of offshore drilling. And I was for offshore shore drilling as well. I, I really was, Tucker. You know, I'm fairly liberal when it comes to that kind of thing. But but I, I got to say, as this thing is now looming, that I might have tar balls in my back in my you know my seawall, uh, and you know, in the wildlife and the in the in the and just the the in, the ineptness of BP, and now they're thinking about uh, crushed <laughs> crushed up tires and golf balls are going to be what stops this thing. Uh, I think that the that the that the, the resolve or the 